Guys, if like me, back in March last year, you were forced to work from home due to the thing that we are all sick of talking about, then it's almost been an entire year. That's right, it's been an entire year of this. Sorry everyone, I was on mute. <laughs> I know, one of us has got to do it, haven't we? Anyway, what I was saying is followed by this. Okay, let me just share my screen. Should be able to see it now. If someone can let me know. Can't see it? Okay, what about, what about now? Still can't see it. Finished off with this. Oh, sorry everyone, uh, it's Amazon at the door. I'll, uh, I'll be right back, quick as I can, sorry. In this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you 10 things that I've learned after working from home for an entire year, and hopefully you can take some of my experiences and incorporate these into your daily lives. This is something that I think has taken me nearly 11 months <laughs> to realize. I've realized that it's really important that I do something for myself before I log on to my laptop for work in the morning. Particularly in the winter months, I was finding that, you know, the days are so dark and that I would finish my day at four or five o'clock, it would be dark, and I just wasn't really in the mood to do anything for myself. And then I kind of felt like, oh, well, I haven't really done anything for me today. And this was like a, a spiral that just wasn't really healthy, to be honest. I read a book called The Power Hour by Adrian Herbert. The idea of the book is that you take the first hour of your day to do something that is important to you. This could be exercising, reading. I personally have really enjoyed, you know, coming up with these YouTube ideas and editing videos. I find that I like to wake up, go and sit in my comfy chair downstairs, is pour myself a coffee and start editing a video. Take some time for you in the morning before you log on and you'll thank yourself later in the day. The second thing that I've learned is that I do not miss commuting at all. I want you to imagine something, right? It's a dark January morning, the rain is hammering on the window, it's cold, and you're in your nice comfy bed, the alarm goes off, and then you realize that you have to get out of bed, put your work clothes on, only to go outside to be hammered with rain, sit in traffic in the freezing cold in your damp clothes. I do not miss this at all. <laughs> And I think the vast majority of you will probably agree I have saved so much money. I think I read a study online saying that we'd saved like 250 million pounds in the first lockdown. So that could be tripled by now. However, even though I don't miss commuting, part of me kind of misses driving. Like I know that sounds weird, but I really enjoyed having that period of time in the morning for listening to podcasts, listening to music. So now I try and incorporate some of that into my power hour in the mornings. The third thing I've learned after working from home for an entire year is that it's extremely easy to lose contact with people. You know those people who you don't really work with day to day, but you would like to see in the kitchen and you know you'd have a chat, you'd ask about how their weekend was, etc. Yeah, you don't really get that with working from home because there's this friction of you have to ring someone or you have to put in a catch up. I think it's really important to try and make time for those conversations though, you know those kitchen conversations that you would get in the office while you're making a cup of tea, or like myself, probably making a cup of coffee. And what I've started doing is putting in coffee catch-ups with those people who you don't see as much anymore. And I found that this is really nice because it's an informal chat and it gives you that conversation that you don't get in a virtual environment. And that is actually one of the things that I really miss about being in the office because I do like a chat with people. With no commuting time and, you know, periods of lockdown where you can't do a great deal really other than go for a walk. The fourth thing I learned was that it's extremely easy to stay logged on for longer in the day. This can make you feel like you're actually living at work and not working from home. Someone told me that a while ago and I was like, oh yeah, that's really good, I'm gonna use that. Apparently I am not alone with this because there was a study done by Harvard Business School where they analyzed 3.1 million emails across 16 global cities. They found that the average working day for people working from home had increased by 8.2% 
which is equal to 48.5 minutes. This was during the pandemic's early weeks, so maybe people have adjusted, but you can see there, just from working from home, the average person's day increased by almost an hour. And I guess that is because we don't have the commute to and from work, so it's a lot easier to stay logged on. What I've learned from this is after working a few silly hour days back in the summer, now I put time in my calendar for when I'm leaving work, and after I finish work, I put my laptop away in a cupboard, out of the way, so that I'm not thinking about work until the next day. By putting the laptop away in the cupboard, that's my mental cue of, right, I'm leaving the office. Closing time. Tools and technology. I remember back in March 2020, when this first started, I had my work laptop, and I was sat on the sofa, kind of hunched over, working away, and I remember one day thinking, this cannot be good. My posture looks like a banana, this cannot be healthy at all, I need to get some equipment. Having an external screen, monitor, and chair is invaluable for the type of work that I do, because I'm a data analyst. A lot of my time is spent switching between screens, so this is really invaluable and it's just not practical to be on my laptop on a sofa. The things that I would recommend that you get if you haven't got them already, I'm sure you probably have, but if you sat there now thinking, I still work on the sofa, please, please get these. A good chair, you know, we spend eight hours a day sat in this chair, you may as well try and get a good one. Also ask if your employer is willing to give you one. An external monitor to avoid hunching over, because it's really, really not good for your back and your neck muscles. And then a mouse and a keyboard, because I don't know about you, but I can't spend all day on a trackpad scrolling. I have made my office slash desk space as nice as I can possibly afford to, because I'm a bit of a nerd when it comes to tech and desk setups and stuff like that, so I have spent a bit of money. I would encourage people to make your desk area a pleasant place to be. I don't know about you, but I find myself in a lot more meetings than I used to. Our diaries are now filled with catch-ups and stand-ups in order to keep in contact with our team and stakeholders. While these are really important, I also find now that it's a lot easier to get distracted because my time Sundays is spent going from call to call to call and it's difficult to get work done in between the meetings. Generally, people have found that it takes on average 23 minutes to get focused on a task. So this is you're working on a task and it takes you 23 minutes before you're fully into it. And this is what I found recently. I find it really difficult to sometimes do deep focused work between meetings because you physically can't get focused for 20, 30 minutes, by which time you've probably got another meeting. What I would recommend you do to this is start blocking out focus time in your calendars. I have recently started blocking out two hours a day at any given point where my calendar is blocked out for focus time and I work on projects that I need to get done. This is really good because you can get involved and get stuck into a piece of work without being distracted. Overall, I would highly recommend blocking out two hours or at least an hour a day for focus work I really prefer doing this in the morning before everyone logs on and it gets really busy and hectic. The seventh thing I've learned is that it's really important to get moving and keep moving. I'm sure most of you will agree, like myself, that your daily walk has become a highlight of your day during lockdown. You know, there's not much else we can do, so going on a daily stroll for an hour just to unwind has really, really helped. I find not only is it nice to stretch my legs, but it's also the only time of day where I seem to be <laughs> not staring at the screen behind me. It's really nice not to have that screen time. I've learned that I have to get out for a walk every day, otherwise I go a bit mad. You know, there have been a handful of occasions over the last year where I haven't walked and I haven't left the house and they've not been good days. <laughs> I think it's important to try and get some sort of daily activity and one thing I've started doing on my walks now is not even taking my phone. I just leave everything and just try and disconnect for a bit. If like myself, you're really into the gym, it's really difficult at the moment not being able to go. I really, really do miss the gym. Home workouts are becoming a bit boring now, I think, and I'm more than ready for the gyms to reopen. However, I am trying to stick to doing two to three home workouts a week 
even the majority of the time I really don't want to. I think it's just important to try and keep a routine, to try and keep healthy and active. I really try and stretch like every couple of hours because I don't know about you, but my back just really, really hurts if I'm stuck in the chair all day. Uh, one thing that I've started doing recently, which is a bit, a bit weird, but I think, I think it works for me anyway, is I've started standing up on one of my meetings. So I'll turn the camera off, make sure you turn the camera off because you might get a few, <laughs> a few awkward angles otherwise. Turn the camera off and just stand up and just stand up for your meeting. I haven't got a standing desk, although I would really, really like to get one. But yeah, I just stand up for the meeting and it helps me stretch my legs and just get out of the chair for a bit. This is something that I've been guilty of again up until recently. Last summer in particular, I found that I was eating at my desk every single day and I wasn't really taking adequate breaks because I kind of felt guilty that, I don't know, maybe I'd missed something or I was so busy that I just needed to get work done. I don't think this is beneficial and recently I've started taking a proper lunch break of about 45 minutes, an hour, just to kind of decompress, unwind a little bit and think about something else other than work. This is something I would highly recommend if you still eat at your desk. Occasionally, I still will, I'm not gonna lie to you, but I think having a proper break and taking regular breaks in general is something that I would really recommend that you do. I find that when I take a proper lunch break and come back, I feel more refreshed and ready for the second half of my day. If, like myself, your vision isn't great at all and you wear contact lenses or glasses, you may find that your eyes are drying out a lot more than they used to. Recently, I went to an optician's and he said that everyone was finding the same thing. And essentially, it's because we're staring at a screen all day. And when you stare and concentrate, we don't blink as much, which means that our eyes dry out more often. He recommended that every 20 minutes, look at something far in the distance and blink for a few times and also if needed get some teardrops because apparently they help. This is something that I've started doing and to be honest I don't know if it works because I probably spend all day looking at the screen but anything I can do to kind of get rid of dry eyes etc I'll give it a go. One other thing I noticed is that when I went to the opticians my prescription had got a lot worse because I've been staring at screens throughout lockdown for over a year. He recommended that I increase my prescription and hopefully my new glasses will mean that I'm not getting a headache as much and I can see things hopefully a bit clearer. Fingers crossed anyway. If you are doing an eye test or your prescription feels like it's not as good as it once was, I would recommend getting your eyes tested because like myself, you'll probably find that you need to go up in strength for your prescription. The final thing that I've learned is that in the future, I think the ideal setup is three to four days working from home and then one or two days a week in the office for collaboration and team project work. I've heard a lot of people say a similar sort of thing. People seem to want a mix of working from home and being in office. And I really think this will give people the best of both worlds, particularly when it comes to the flexibility side of it and not commuting, etc. But I think there are definitely some benefits to going into the office for collaboration purposes. I do think some things are easier in person, particularly if you're doing any sort of training or engagement events. I generally feel like the engagement's better in a face-to-face -face setting. There's been many surveys done over the last year and I think it's fair to say that we're probably never gonna go back to five days a week in office. Maybe some people will because I know I really, really missed the office at the start and over the last couple of months, I've kind of got used to working from home. I'd be really interested in hearing all of your comments and the things that you've learned after working from home for a year down below so let me know if you did get this far in the video please hit the like button and consider subscribing for more content like this in the future that's all from me thank you very much for watching take care and i'll see you soon